today I'll be adding some JDM style additions to the 2023 WRX. So in this video, I'll be installing some parts which I feel like bring the original WRX feel back into the new platform, as well as showing you how to install them. They're pretty easy and showing you the quality of them before you purchase them. So yeah, let's check out what I'm gonna be doing today. One of the most recognizable parts of the Subaru WRX line is the bonnet scoop. Feeding cold air through the top mount intercooler on the EJ and the FA engines, a small aspect of the new generation Subarus that lets it down from the look of the car is just the smaller and more slimline scoops that stray from the original Subaru look. The front end seems to have a fair amount of plastic and dead space. Where you'd find functional grills in previous generations, there seems to be a trend of adding fake grills for looks, and it's all just a lot of plastic. So I got some parts here from a company called D-Maker and Street Element. I'll put the uh, link for where I got them from here. Um, and yeah, I'll unbox them, show you what the quality of the parts is like and what I'm putting on today. So now I've done enough talking, time to jump in and modify the car. So the first thing we gotta do is take the bumper off. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so I've taken the bumper inside. It is really hot in Australia at the moment. Um, it, we're having at least 90% humidity days as well. So even with just the air con on at the moment, if I go over to the window, I'll show you. It's actually that, that humid at the moment. It's just too much to be doing this in the garage. So um, to give you a bit of a cleaner idea of what's going on without me covered in sweat, head to toe. Um, I'll be disassembling this bumper and yeah, let's get to it.
So taking a look at the obvious differences between the two of these is this is all just a plastic cover uh, with the, the honeycomb material that goes up and around. The new one has a gloss painted black center section which I think will go a lot better with the black car. And then there's the obvious difference between two of them is that this one actually has an indicator and a daytime running light with some wiring that comes out the back. I'll show you what to do in a little bit with that wiring. It's pretty simple, um, but it will really just bring that car, I think, into the higher end look just with the gloss black along the top here, matching the rest of the black of the car. There is a lot of plastic on the Subarus, so trying to reduce it a little bit I do like this honeycomb and I like that it ac accents the car. So um, I think it'll really fit. So now what I'll do is I'll plug it in. But first you'll see there's a little bit of a gap along the edge here and there is a way to get rid of that. But first, before I show you how to do that, I'm gonna take this back to the garage so that we can start to install it. All right, I'm back in the garage now. So one thing that I just wanted to show you just before you put it on is to make sure there's a little slot here that a bolt can go through. Best way to do it is just slide a little bolt in and then have a nut on the other side that will tighten this to the actual bumper and it will pull this inner edge in and make sure it lines up a little bit better. Now that we've got it all together, we don't want to put the bumper on just yet because there's some wiring to do. I know that with some of the people that are doing the installs online, there's a second wiring harness that's actually already there. I'm not actually going to do that today. I'm going to utilize the wiring harness that came with the kit um, because there's some under dash stuff that you've got to do to get that to work. Whereas using the wiring kit that we have here, we can actually fuse it, which in my opinion is probably a little bit better because we'll be able to control about where the actual fuse is and just know that we have a bit of certainty that it's going to be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the wiring from sort of the battery side over to the far side. Okay, so I've got the wire in here. There's a negative earth and you've got a positive terminal. So what I want to do is I just want to make this a little bit more wire exposed. So I always have a bit of these on hand. This is a really handy way to fuse things and not tap into wires too much within the engine bay. Being a new car, I don't really want to splice absolutely everything and then come down with electrical gremlins later. So these ways, always testing, being able to pull it off and get rid of it if you don't want it anymore, if you're selling the car and it can go back to stock. So that's all good. And now I put some 10 amp fuses into this. So we'll have an original 10 amp fuse and then we'll have the 10 amp fuse for the actual lights. So now what you'll see as well is that you've got two plugs with this wiring harness. One is obviously the shorter side and one is the longer. So the shorter side is just down underneath this battery to the left side of the car. And then this one runs along the front to the right side. So I'm gonna feed these down underneath between where this, there's a little hole down in here. So it doesn't interfere with anything in the engine bay to go down that way. So we'll first run it down there. Okay, so now that I've got this run up in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna open up the fuse box and I'm gonna take out this 10 amp fuse right here. There's two 7.5s next to it and another 7.5 next to it. So they third along just in front of these three. So one thing to really remember when you're using this sort of fuse system is that the power has to go in and through the fuse. So you want to make sure that it's actually located the right way, otherwise the fuse is actually completely useless for the system and it will just completely bypass it. So what I want to do now is I'm going to turn the ignition on and I'm going to test which side of this with the test light, which side is the power side and which side is the dead side. This is now on, and so I'm going to test this side first, nothing, and then this side. So you'll see that the power light turned on when I touched the closer towards the front of the car side, and then when I touched the back, nothing. 
So what I want from this is I now want to put this in so that it is away from the active side. And there you go. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I plug in this earth wire. I'll turn off the ignition now and um, we'll keep going. step is I actually ran the wires out and I've just plugged them in to the front two sides just to double check to see whether or not when I turn on the ignition these lights will actually work. All right so a little discovery for us Australians is that the indicator is all fully LED and enclosed so there's no wire to tap into. I'm not sure why the different markets have different wiring I suppose it's because they have a bulb uh, in certain places or maybe certain uh, models this is the 50th anniversary so I'm not sure whether it's any different to the others but for the moment anyway what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape this out the way sadly I won't be able to use this as an indicator it'll just be a driving light but if you do have the model which has the indicator you can literally just tap this in go find the yellow or orange wire that is in the back of the actual indicator itself. It should just unbolt, turn it on, take it off. Um, and yeah, you'd be able to make this into an indicator and driving light. But for my purposes, I guess I'm going to have to just settle with it being a driving light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape this up so that it's not hanging free. And then I will plug it in and put everything back on. Just before I put everything back together, I've zip tied uh, just in here so that this doesn't get out of hand and can plug into the cable that I've got over here. And I've also run it underneath this rubber stripping along the front. And then I've just zip tied it up and out of the way here as well, and then zip tied it to this side of the harness. So it's not gonna come out and drag along the ground as we're driving, which is the main point of that. And then of course I've zip tied just this little bit to this tab here so we don't have too much length so that we don't want that one poking through as well too. Okay, so now that I've done that, there's two major learnings from it, is when you're taking off the first liner, make sure you have a proper trim removing tool that's sort of like a fork that you can get in and pry them out. Um, they are super brittle from the heat, so um, I guess, yeah, I, got, I broke two of them, which was, you know, now I need to go and replace two of those. They're relatively easy to get though, so I won't need to go to Subaru, I'll just go and get a generic um, clip that will put that in. Um, and the other one is, just when you're taking this in a tray off, there's actually two, try and get some light here. There's actually two clips up and within, within the actual hood scoop itself. And they're really, really hard to get to. So um, they're not using the original plastic clips that they would use in the bumper. They're using these lighter plastic clips. So they were, yeah, pretty hard on the angle that they're at to get off. But I mean, they came off, they're just like a normal plastic clip that you put your, pry bar in or your flathead screwdriver in and it will open up. So now that I've got that off, um, I'm now going to move on to removing the hood scoop.
worth noting that these little plastic tabs need to be pinched to come out. So you need to pinch, uh, there's one, two, three, four. And once you pinch them, the thing should come out. It's a little bit fiddly, um, but I managed to get it out without breaking anything, which is good. Hey, Joel from the future here. Sorry, I completely forgot to film it, but there is a little bit of foam that goes on the outside of the hood scoop before you put it on. Uh, as well, there was some bolts that you have to put through the hood scoop itself to hold it on. Um, I put them in once the tray was back on, so you can kind of see it all bolted up. I just forgot to film it because I was pretty much dead by this point. It was really hot in that shed. Um, so yeah. So pretty great result in the end for the car. Really happy with it. Looks really great. Um, it works really well. So um, if you want these parts yourself, just head to www.dmaker.com.au. The team there are really great to deal with. So if you have any questions or anything like that, just hit them up. Hope you enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you next time. Gadget. up. I'm about to go off like a weapon. Fuel to the top, got a filled up engine. In my thoughts obsession, I will not stop. No, I'm never second guessing. I got a god complex. Haters love to hate, but I never feel pressed. Got a lot on my plate, but I never get stressed.